I'm very pleased to present you my colorblindness emulator. So I'm Agat Padilla. I'm a junior front-end developer. I've been using Ember for only a year, and year and a half. So I've been digging into that. And also I've been digging into accessibility uh, in general, which was, it's a fascinating um, topic. So um, I've been digging into that, but also into subtopics such as color blindness, which is something that for me was really fascinating. And I think my first question, of course, was how do people who have color blindness see colors? How do they go online? How do they have, how, how is their experience when they, I don't know, when they buy something, when they're on a platform? And I didn't have a lot of complete answers, to be honest. I was checking on some associations, articles, reports, but it was, it wasn't, I wasn't fully satisfied. So I wanted to dig deeper into that and maybe to see further than just like emulations of pictures of how people see, uh, see colors. I also wondered at one point, how many people are actually colorblind? And actually quite a lot. It's only estimations, but one in 12 men and one in 200 women are actually uh, colorblind. And the estimation on some resources are around 300 million people. And I've made some additional calculation where actually show that it goes up to 600 million. So, you know, quite a lot of people at the end. So I was like, we, we need more, more resource. So where, where is the information? Maybe I'm missing it. I wasn't super sure. So what I decided to do is to kind of emulate it myself and see if it would be possible to see how people with different types of color blindness, yeah, see, see online and see, see the world. So color blindness emulator, enter the scene. And what I started with first was to see if they were color emulators already available online. So I actually found one from help to you on GitHub who, use, who is using a SVG filter, which is also using CSS to call each types of color blindness. Uh, so then to uh, have different ways of seeing colors for eight, eight types of them, which is quite complete and very, very nice. And in the demo, um, from this person, it's basically showing eight different results on eight different pictures. So I saw this was like quite, quite clear, and I was like, okay, let's try to do that, but for you know an entire page to see how we can have a full immersion at least online. So what I did was creating an Ember application. Actually, reading quite a lot, chasing for a lot of different resources, information gathering, but also sharing real life examples and mostly practice or counter examples to make the colorblind experience a bit more tough to have a better awareness. And my, my goal as well was also to aim to have 100% accessibility for any, any users checking out this project. So for anyone using a screen reader, for people using only keyboard navigation, for mobile, so yeah, try to, to still have this um, accessible part of it and yeah, hopefully bring awareness for, for my hand to learn more about this, but of course, for anyone interested to maybe use it as, as a resource place. <laughs> so this is how this looks. So we have basically kind of a menu that is emulating those eight different types of color blindness, and I can show you how it looks like here. So uh, we have here, as I say, like eight types, and maybe to give a very, very short definition of them, protanopia is basically when you have a red, uh, green color blindness, and protanomaly is a milder version of it. So when you have, let's say, protanopia, or in general, any color blindness type that ends with nopia, it's basically saying that some cones inside your eyes are actually missing. So you see color in a very different way. And when there is anomaly in a specific color blindness type, it basically means that these cones are here, but they are not working at their fullest. It could be uh, defective or working halfway. So 
this is another way to understand that those terms with anomaly are basically milder version of their colorblindness types. So we can have a, a quick look. So in the first part, I share a few definitions with a recap where we can have a look. So protanopia, red-green colorblindness, definitely. <laughs> Protanomaly shares a more milder version of it. Deuteranopia also has this kind of red-green colorblindness, but also shares it with, with yellow, with purple, with uh, gray as well. The green caption is actually quite gray when I have the simulator on. Deuteranomaly, again, as a milder version, the, some, some colors are a bit more faded, like the green, uh, the green, the red, and Tritanopia is quite different where we have a, a weird color blindness around red and yellow, where yellow looks like pink, literally, but also with green, blue, and purple. Tritanomaly, again, very milder version, and achromatopsia is literally when you do not see uh, any other colors, you only see shades of gray. And achromatomaly, a milder version, which is a bit more like a, a dull version of the colors we see as non-colorblind uh, people. And so yeah, that's um, a pretty cool way to see a lot of different types on one resource. What I added as well was also different examples that you might already know maybe from, uh, from experience around form and communicating with colors only, which is not really useful when you don't <laughs> differentiate green and red. When you are using links, styling, or buttons to basically say, okay, I want to access it, but I have no clue where is the button. Oh, okay. And additional things like color contrast, which is like probably the most known um, as well in terms of color blindness, but also when you are online shopping with color pickers, do you see what kind of colors they are here? Not really. <laughs> so that's another thing to think about. And I think my last example here is about pie charts, infographics. There are ways that are really not accessible for different types of color blindness. So definitely not, not even able to, to use it. So I added more resources in, there are more resources in, in additional links. So feel free to, to check it out later on. And yeah, I also had it, all my resources, books, definitions, articles, extensions, applications. If there is one that I would highly recommend is the Color Accessibility Workflows by Gary Coati, who gives very simple definition, very interesting research from, from the, the medicine industry, the medicine side. And yeah, overall, yeah, feel free to dig into that. It's definitely a very, very interesting topic. And yeah, I also wanted to say thank you for the person who helped me through um, this project at different stages. So Leandro, Nelvax Populi, and Mintai Mie for the early stages around my routing issues up to some content security policy adds on that not really working well. So thank you to, to you three. Otherwise, I think I wouldn't be done today with this project. Again, really, really appreciate this super cool Ember community helping out. And next step, I think I would love to see if I could implement this project into a Chrome extension to enable people to just, yeah, emulate this in, in any web page they would like and give a bigger awareness on uh, yeah, all the different types of color blindness, and also maybe to test this using an extension and see where they can improve uh, the product. So yeah, thank you so much. You can uh, definitely check out the website on colorblindnessemulator.netlify.hub. My repo is under uh, GitHub Agat Padilla. And yeah, if you have any questions, I'll be happy, of course, to to answer. But in general, I can share again the the presentation and the project. Thank you very much.